Hi everyone, this is Brittany Bond, and welcome back to the podcast. I am reporting live from our camper van here in Reno, and we've spent all day getting ready to go to Burning Man, and it has been <laughs> such a fucking roller coaster. And I'm excited to share all of this with you. But honestly, the main thing that I'm really excited to share with you is that I've just talked to my family for the first time in 10 years. So if you have any sort of family trauma that you are trying to heal, I just want you to know that I totally understand. (laughs) And uh, I'm here for you. I feel you. And also... I hope to be an inspiration and an activation that it's possible to heal your family trauma and heal yourself also (laughs) through this. Um, So I'm going to share that story as well. Um, I just find it to be really great to be like raw and real and share with you guys like what's happening for me in real time. So I'm here on our bed that we're sharing, me and my girlfriends. We need to get laundry done so there's no sheets on the bed. It looks pretty ghetto (laughs) if you're watching visually. Everything today has just been such a hilarious uh, thing. Okay, let me just dive into the story and then you get it. Um, So we flew into San Francisco last night. We landed at 8 p.m., which was like, oh, I don't know, like, not 10 a.m. Thailand time. So for all of us, we had slept on the plane a little bit, but like, not very deeply. Also, if you have never met me in real life, I'm actually pretty tall, like for a woman. I'm 175 centimeters. So I don't feel like I'm very tall because both my sisters are taller than me. My dad's like 200 meters. I was actually the short one in my family and I did a lot of modeling growing up. So for me, my height was always like this super positive thing. (laughs) But when people meet me in real life, if they see me online, because I'm very petite, right? So like when they see me online, it's like, I'm just bopping around. And usually I date men that are taller than me. Like my last partner was taller than me. Anyways, and then they see me and they're like, you're a lot taller than I thought you were. And I'm like, I know, (laughs) it's great. But this relates to my story because when I'm on planes, leg room is a thing. Like my back was hurting a lot. But the girls that I'm with are very short. Not (laughs) short. They're not very short. They are normal height um for a woman and anyways oh this oh this is what I want to share this with you this is really great so manifesting right so for this trip I told myself that I was really excited to come like I kept getting invitations to come to Burning Man but I had this like physical mind rational brain that was like I need to stay in Thailand I want to build out my impact this year and in order to do that I need to stay in one place and you know, my house is paid for. Everything's very cheap in Thailand. And also I can focus, you know, like I've spent a lot of my life traveling and it's really fun to travel, but honestly getting your life set up in a new location and adjusting your body and finding the gym and, you know, visiting. And when you're in a new place, it's like hanging out with all my friends I don't normally see. So it's just like this kind of constant holiday. Again, first world problems. I'm super grateful for the life that I've built. And also I've spent, you know, all of my 20s like building businesses, building community, but really honestly traveling like that was my main goal was like, I want to see the world. I want to see the world. My midheaven, if you're into astrology, my midheaven's in Sagittarius. My Venus is in Sagittarius. So I'm like falling in love, going on adventures, traveling, traveling, traveling. And now that I'm in my early 30s, I'm 34, I feel like, okay, it's time to get back. It's time to do my soul mission. And I feel like your soul mission is also, you know, you doing you and what makes you feel happy. That for me translates now to helping making an impact in the world in the sense of like inspiring all of you, activating you to be your authentic self, helping you to like, you know, grow your, grow your dream life, all the things. So for me, I thought that, that meant I needed to stay in one place and focus. That was really what it was. It's like, Brittany, you've played enough. Now it's time to focus. But honestly, I feel like that's very black and white thinking. That was kind of like my corporate brain coming out again where I was like, I need to just do this one thing. And like, you know, very much my masculine, like, oh, I need to force myself and push myself. And then the universe kept being like, do you want to go to Burning Man? Hey, you want to go? Hey, you want to go? And I've shared this in a couple podcasts where I finally... Like I wrote down a couple times, like 
basically I finally just wrote down exactly what I wanted in order to go and I kept getting invitations to go from different friends and different things and it wasn't matching my list and so I said no thank you uh, I'm still keeping this open and then Raquel my friend reached out to me and she was like I have a camper van I have a camp I have outfits for us I have been to Burning Man four times before this will be my fifth burn I know exactly what to do and we can all travel together me you and our other friend Luna so like we can do this girls trip that's like super fun and empowering we're all like you know really excited for it and I was like fuck yes this is nine out of ten things and there was more things but like that was it was like basically everything except for this last one and I shared this in one of my recent podcasts that I was like I'm really excited to see how the universe you know makes this one come true right and I didn't share about what it was because if you know anything about manifesting, you know that you're not, it's like your personal prayer with the universe. It's like your personal conversation, your intimate relationship with, I'm just trying to get closer to the camera. If you're watching visually, you can see me being all creepy and like scooting up closer and just being like, hey, what's up? How's it going? This is me on like, my body doesn't know what day it is or time and I just took an hour nap and there's many things about to share with you that's happening with our camper van. It's very hilarious. Um, anyways, so the, it came true, the thing I was manifesting. So I'm going to share it now. Basically, if you're manifesting something, it's really important to keep it to yourself or only share it with people who can hold the vibrational reality of what you're manifesting. <sighs> I just want to take a deep breath. Let's take a deep breath together. I invite you to take a deep breath with me. <coughs> okay, we're back. <laughs> life is so fun. I just love my life so much. And I'm inviting you to in laugh some more about your life because it's all really one big joke. But anyways, the, th the reason why it's important to keep it to yourself if you're manifesting something is because if you share it with someone who is not able to hold the vibrational reality that you're stepping into they can add negative energy to it or they can say something that can make you step out of the knowingness that you create your reality and that, you know, to stay in this like high vibrational state of like, it's happening, it's happening, it's happening. I'm just in like this expectation of like excitement of like how it's about to happen, right? So for me, the last, the last thing I was manifesting coming to Burning Man was I asked the universe for business class tickets to Burning Man because for me sleep is super important it's like my kryptonite and also leg room <laughs> so I um I was willing to pay for the tickets I also asked around like some friends who have like um they work for the airlines like standby tickets I was like exploring all the options you know and also like there's a ton of people coming to Burning Man from all over the world right now so we couldn't even fly into Reno because tickets were like just normal tickets were like three times the price and there wasn't even enough for all like each plane didn't even have three tickets left like this is like and we booked it like a month ahead of time so anyways we flew into San Francisco and I got like an email a couple of days before where they have you do like a bid to uh, upgrade your ticket so I bought I bought our tickets on my credit card and from what I understood, I bought us economy class. And so I was like down to upgrade, right? And I decided to, I had a friend, this is sometimes what happens with the universe, they give you like these intuitive hits where like people come and they talk to you about exactly the thing that you need to know. So my friend Aaron was on the island. He's like my brother. He just came back to visit and he, f he travels like full time because he's a, a famous DJ. And so I always see him like posting Insta stories of him in business class. And so I asked him, I was like, yo, Aaron, like, does your, like, whoever's booking your gigs for you, you know, like, do they pay for your business class? And he's like, no, they pay for my normal flight. So say like Thailand to America. And he said his secret is that he goes into the airline, like he goes up to the desk, like when he's checking in and he asks them is there any upgrades available? And what he said was that, like, you know, if they have an open seat, they want to fill it, uh, an open seat in business class, right? So it's, like, right before the plane's going to take off, everyone's checking in. And so he just asked them, like, 
what's the price if I want to upgrade? So he was saying for a normal business class ticket, that's like three thousand, four thousand dollars. Um, like his uh, his the the management company or whatever pays like his thousand dollar flight, and then he pays usually like an extra five hundred to six hundred dollars to upgrade to business class. So what would have been a four thousand dollar ticket was now a one thousand six hundred dollar ticket, and he only paid six hundred dollars of that, and you know was able to like lay down sleeping for a fourteen hour flight or something. And he's like, it is so worth it. I highly recommend this. And I was like, I didn't know this was possible to just ask them, like, can I just pay to upgrade right now? Because he's like, yeah, if you buy it online, it's like three times the price. But it's kind of like you just wait till the very last minute. So I just told the universe, I was like, okay, here's my budget. I'm, I'm happy to do this. Like, if it's this price, then I'll, I'm happy to upgrade. Like, because for me, this is, this is my last thing on my list that I'm manifesting. So get to the airport and I'm the first one there and we have like we have two flights we're getting on like I was the first one out of the girls to get there so I talked to them and I asked I asked them like do you have any upgrades available and they were like um the first flight is full for a business class but you can talk to them when you get to Taiwan on our layover and you can ask them if they have any and I was like, okay, well, can we at least all sit together or something on this first flight? And they were like, yeah, yeah. So they put us all together, which was super nice. And then she looked at my tickets and she was like, why are you wanting to upgrade? And I'm like, what do you mean? Why am I wanting to upgrade? She's like, you have like first class tickets. And I was like, what? And she's like, yeah, like it's not business class, but it's like the step below business class and it has like way more leg room. Um, some... Yeah, and I was, and it's like, you know, it's still one of those cabins where they like close the curtain and like the economy people can't come through. Like it's like a special thing and they give you like nicer food and it's basically like business class, but you don't have like a fully laid down seat, but you have a lot more leg room and it's like only a, like a handful of people in this section and you get your own bathroom. That's really nice and, um, you know nicer food and alcohol and all stuff even though I don't drink but I thought it was nice and I ordered like I ordered like an so anyways basically we get there and we get in the airplane and I'm sitting in my chair and I'm like somehow the universe just gave me this thing and I didn't even need to pay more money and I literally like all of us girls were asking each other how did we get these tickets because we didn't like like the ticket prices that we were paying was just not like I literally thought we were just buying economy tickets. Like it wasn't super expensive. I mean, what is expensive? It was just normal pricing to travel to the States. And <laughs> I just, to me, this is like a perfect example of how the universe answers whatever you need. And it's usually in a super funny way that you're not expecting. If you're open with it and you stay calm and in your center, like the goal is to stay calm and be in your center and everything will work out from there because when the lady was like um you know business class is full I was just like okay then it's not meant to be like I always tell myself uh this is mine by divine right like is this coming to me if it's mine by divine right like if it's meant for me it's gonna find me and I don't need to stress about it I don't need to worry about it whatever is for my highest good is going to happen and so when she said like yeah we don't have business class I was just like okay and then she was just like, but you have first class. Like, why do you care? And I was just like, oh. And even so, basically, I was super grateful. The leg room was way better. And I actually have this thing where I get really uh, claustrophobic, like energetically, when I'm in economy class, especially for a really long flight, because there's, uh, in real life, I don't hang out with that many people. I'm very selective with how, who I hang out with and what energy I hang out with, because I'm very sensitive to energy and I can like, read people's energy and, if I'm just sitting in that for a long time, uh, there's only so much energy work you can do. And when you're sleeping, it's harder to do energy work to protect your field. So anyways, the energy was very clean where we were sitting and I was with the girls and we were laughing and I was editing one of the podcasts I just released and good vibes, you know, and then we get to Taiwan, our layover. And I asked them, I was like, do you have any upgrades available? Just because still, I was just curious and I was curious to how much it was, you know? And they were like, no, we're full for business class, but we, we got you guys all like really good seats in first class. 
And so I was like, okay, this is what's meant to be. And I ended up sleeping really well. And I was even dreaming, which, you know, on normal economy flights that are that long, it was like 11 hour flight from Taiwan to San Francisco. I normally would not be able to sleep. Like I've had, I've had flights where I actually had panic attacks in economy. Um, and I know this is first world problems, but this is also someone who is like, I have just become since I have lived on the island and gotten way more into my spirituality and more energetically aware. I'm just way more sensitive nowadays to the energy around me. And with that comes <laughs> these types of things. <laughs> so if you're sensitive, I feel you. <laughs> I am one of these people. Um, so yeah. Okay, Moss, what else? Um, so we got to San Francisco and then we were renting the car and it went smoothly. Uh, Luna, the other girl that's with us, it's her first time in America. She's from th both of them are from Spain and they did the whole thing with her where they like, were like, are you trying to work in America? <laughs> are you going to become an illegal immigrant? And she's like, no, I'm just going to a festival. I just want to come play. And we were like, they, they gave her this thing where she had to like go talk to the immigration officers. Like they made her go through like extra checks. And so we were like, just stay calm. They're just going to ask you questions. Tell them you have a job outside of America. You don't want to stay. And she stayed calm and everything was great. And, and then we rented the car and we drove four hours to Reno because uh, we, we, you know, we landed in San Francisco because that was like the only flight we all could get on. And we wanted to come here because the RV <coughs> was stored here. And <laughs> we got to Reno at like 2 a.m. And I had booked a hotel when we got out of the airplane at 9 p.m. And um, we got to the hotel and it had like closed. Like they wouldn't let us in. There was no one there. And then and we didn't have Wi-Fi yet because we hadn't gotten SIM cards. So we had to like go to like a casino. Like Reno is basically Vegas, but like smaller and cheaper and kind of sadder. I don't know how else to say that. It's like, I don't know. It feels like a ghost town in some ways. But it's also really cute. It's like quaint. A quaint ghost town. Anyways, we went to a casino nearby. Because we were like, okay, that's at least open. Maybe we can stay there. And oh my god, I have not been to a casino in like years and years. I have never gambled in my life. <coughs> and the flashing lights and the loud noises and the fact that there's no windows and they like make it on purpose so you like get lost when you're trying to leave. I was getting, again, anxiety. Uh, but we were like asking them how much does it cost to get a room? And I just really didn't like the energy in there. Like when we walked in, it smelled like cigarettes and like disinfectant. And I was like, ew. And the hotel that I had booked us was like a normal hotel that was like nice and quaint and also kind of old and vintage. But it was like quiet you know so anyways i got on wi-fi and i called the service provider for the hotel and they ended up connecting with the manager and he's like this old guy and he was so sweet and he was like oh, okay yeah i'll come downstairs i'll meet you down there so we drove back and he let us in and he was like y'all remind me of my daughter she was traveling all over the world and oh yeah you're coming for burning man i know what that is i heard about that <laughs> it's just like oh my god i'm back in america like coming back here is so interesting for me because you know i was here for a week in 2020 I went to New York to visit friends on my way to Rio for Carnival. Um, but that was like a super fast trip. And since then, I haven't been to the States in like eight years. Um, and I haven't lived in America since 26. So I haven't lived in the States for eight years. But I haven't been back home home to California in like 10 years. Like I'm from California. So being back here and having this like and also for me I really have come fully into myself since I um went to Copenhagen which was like literally I got there <coughs> I've been to Copenhagen one time before for a week for my birthday like in 2019 but I didn't really understand the vibe you know I wasn't in the community I didn't really understand it at all I wasn't spiritual so I came back from Rio in New York I had this epic adventure getting back there right when COVID was hitting and I got back into the country two days, two days before lockdown. And I went to, and I, so, and then I was just on Copenhagen, like the island ex invited me, accepted me, nourished me, loved me. And I was, I used <coughs> the safe space to heal and really come into my authentic self. <coughs> Excuse me. So being here in the States after that, like, it's like, I am completely myself and fully in love with who I am. And 
I mean, some people have asked me, like, are you, are you having culture shock? I'm not necessarily having culture shock. I'm just kind of like, I feel like I'm in, <laughs> like, I think I'm just having shock. Like, I don't know if it's, okay, maybe it is culture shock. But, like, it's, when I think of culture shock, I think of, like, a negative connotation. Like, or I think they call it reverse culture shock, like, when you come back home or something. But, anyways, it's not a negative thing. It just kind of feels like I'm in this like dream fairy tale land where like suddenly everyone speaks my language and understands my lingo and especially because I'm on the West Coast because you know I've lived for a long time on the East Coast before I started traveling and that's like a whole other planet like culturally to the West Coast. Uh, so like to be on the West Coast and I don't know like I, I feel like I'm like using my you know my nice charm and my happy go lucky smile and just like bubbly and everyone's just really resonating with it and also everyone speaks English you know like I forget how much like most of my last nine years I have I have lived or traveled through countries where English is not the spoken language so you know of course I love learning new languages and I speak enough Thai to get by and wherever I am, I try and learn some language, some of the language, because I feel like that's what you do to be respectful of where you're going. And also, there's something calming for the nervous system to be where everyone already speaks your language, like literally speaking your lingo. I think that's an expression. Like, you're speaking my language. But like, yeah, literally, they're speaking my language. And also there's something spiritual, like our soul chose to be born in certain places, right? So for whatever reason, my soul chose to be born here in California. Well, I'm in Nevada now, but yesterday I was in California. And, <laughs> and when you go, from what I understand spiritually, when you go back to where you're from, yeah, you might have trauma from, you know, whatever, whatever, but, um, like from childhood and stuff. But energetically and energetically, there is upgrades that you can get. There is, there is like, you know, you like, you like plug back into the grid of where you're from and it can be potentially a huge source of a huge source of power for you. If you're able to utilize it, unlock it and understand how to use it. And for me coming into this super consciously, I'm just like looking around like, okay, universe, what do we have? What are we doing? Like, what do you got for me? I'm, I'm in full receptive mode. How can I use this for my benefit? How can I use this to help people? Like also, this is why I'm sharing these podcasts with you is we are in on this adventure together. Like, I'm just like, we're doing this. And with that, I feel like I need to take another deep breath. My body is super confused on what time it is <laughs> right now and like what it needs to be doing. <laughs> so yeah, that's just, that's the whole thing. Um, so anyways, yeah, that was also like, we, you know, we, by the time we all went to bed, it was like 3 a.m. But um, I woke up and like Raquel was already awake at like 7.30. So four hours later and she said she'd already been up. She, I think she apparently only got like one hour of sleep. She just like her jet lag was so... Ah, you know, crazy. So I got probably four hours of sleep and the beds were so cozy. It was like sleeping on a cloud. Oh my gosh, so nice. I forgot how nice the beds are in the States. <laughs> I mean, I have pretty nice beds at my house in, in Thailand, but in general, Thailand doesn't have very soft bedding. Anyways, so Raquel, Raquel went out to meet a, one of our camp leads uh, for, for a coffee and I went for a run. And um, went along. They have like this river right next to the, it's called the Truckee River, right next to the hotel. So I like was running alongside there. Oh, camera's falling. And um, I went to a local coffee shop to get a drink. And there was no tables or chairs in the coffee shop. It, and I was so confused. So I would ask the lady, I was like, why are there no, like there was an area of where I could tell like tables and chairs used to be. And I was like, why are there no tables or chairs here? Cause I was going to journal and drink my matcha latte. And she was like, oh, so we've been having problems with uh, the homeless people in the area. And I was like, yeah, I noticed there's a lot of homeless people here. Is that, 
like a thing here. Like I haven't been to Reno since I was like 12. So and she's like, yeah, since COVID, it's gotten a lot, a lot more homeless people. And um, a lot of them have mental illnesses and apparently they caused a bunch of disturbances there. So they just decided to like take the tables and chairs out. And I was like, welcome to America. This is how we handle, you know, helping the homeless. We just take the tables and chairs out, you know. I was like, okay. And honestly, it made me like really sad to see, um, to see that, to see so many homeless people because, um, well, in Thailand, there really isn't that many, like, um, they have, I feel like they take care of their people more. Um, and you know, in Europe, there also isn't that many because there's a lot, a lot of social care um, the government takes care of of the people in that way. And here in America, it's just really fucked up. And there's a part of me that's like, how can I help with this? Uh, and then there's a part of me that's like, yeah, I understand the overwhelm. Because, you know, if you live here, and especially if you live here in the States and you see this every day, it's like, how how do you handle this? And it's interesting because I just talked to my best friend, Christina, that I, it's like my best friend growing up. Like, I've known, we've known each other since we were 10 and um like literally my best friend like her dad gave my wedding talk and stuff and like we lived together a bunch of times and she used to work with autistic kids and now she said i just found out today that she works with the homeless in sacramento like she helps um she works for the state helping in programs to help the homeless and i was like that's so amazing and she's like yeah it's really like rewarding in a lot of ways and also it's really sad you know but I was super happy to hear that she's doing something that helps. Um, anyways, uh, I'll get to that in a minute. Cause I just, basically I talked to like all of my family today. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to get to that pretty fast. But, um, so we, oh, I want to talk to you about how I almost had a panic attack. So I had a matcha. I went to the gym. I, well, I journaled, I ended up j- going to the river and journaling by the river, which was really nice. And I journaled what I was grateful for and what I was manifesting on this trip and my intentions and, you know, just all the beautiful things. And then uh, we packed our bags and we um, went to the the phone company store, like the AT&T store here, to get um, SIM cards. And the girls' SIM cards worked perfectly. And then mine, it just was taking forever. Like, it wasn't working. They, like, tried it, like, three different times. And then the guy was like, okay... I retook my money, they gave me a SIM card, and they were like, okay, it's just going to take like five minutes for it to activate, but you can just go. So we went to the grocery store to get some groceries, and and then it just wasn't working. So we drove back over there, and then it just like took another like, I don't know, 45 minutes, and it still wasn't working. And then Raquel was like, we need to go because we have to drive at least another hour to uh, where the camper van's parked. And I don't know if the camper van's even going to start. We haven't started it. We haven't driven it in a year, like and we need to like figure all this stuff out today. And I was like, okay, so can you, I just told the people, can you refund me? So we waited there for 45 minutes extra after we had been there for like another 45 minutes before. And like, I didn't have a SIM card. And, um, and, it, and then at this moment I had like major jet lag crash. I think it was also a caffeine crash and my body, if it doesn't get enough sleep, so I think it's also like lack of sleep for the last couple of days. Cause also when I was in Bangkok, I didn't get that much sleep and then the plane ride and then like only f- anyway, so like three nights of like not that much sleep. And normally I sleep like eight to 10 hours a night. I love my sleep. I need sleep in order to function as my happy perky self. <laughs> and I super own that. I feel like sometimes people make themselves feel guilty that they like to sleep. Like I'm like, we ch- should champion and and like celebrate taking naps. Like I fucking love naps. I also love sleeping a lot. I think it's really good for you. Anyway, so we get in the car and Raquel's driving. I'm in the front, the passenger front passenger seat, and Luna's in the back. And I just started to feel like like literally sensory overwhelmed. Like, and I get this sometimes if I don't have enough sleep and if I'm, I'm in situations yeah that are just overwhelming for me. And I get to the point where I really can't talk. So I put my headphones on just to kind of get some like, like for me, my headphones are like to help me create my own vibrational bubble around me. And sometimes I like, I, I wasn't even listening to music. I just like had it on the noise canceling because it kind of buffers me with everything that's happening outside <laughs> of that. 
Uh, but then like, you know, Raquel asked me like, are you okay? Is there anything I can help you with? And I was like, oh no, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. And this is my like kind of defense mechanism when I'm really overwhelmed. Your girl, Brittany, has still got her stuff that she's working through, you know? <laughs> Being back home in California is bringing it all up. <laughs> um, and also, like, something to say is uh, I really love these women, but I don't know them super well. This is what I find really interesting is, like, Raquel messaged me, and we've known each other on the island for years, like five years, and she's super into community impact and protecting Mama Copanyang just as much as I am. I have used her jeep a couple times when she's off the island like we're like island family and also we've never hung out one-on-one -on -one, like on purpose and then she just called me up and she was like do you want to go to burning man with me and luna is her really good friend so for me when i'm in this overwhelmed state and i'm around people that i it's vulnerable to speak up you know to say like uh yeah i'm on the verge of a panic attack and then to be around people that i don't know super well like yeah, you can have good times with them. But when you're like on the verge of panic attack, you need people who can just read you and be like, oh, no, this is what she needs, you know. Um, and so I own that I need to speak up more. And also I ended up telling them afterwards what happened. And they were like, oh, OK, so thank you for telling us. We'll like look for the signs later. And like basically like we want to be there for you. So they're amazing. But what happened in the moment was I think Raquel was trying to like make the mood happier because she thought I was just sad that I didn't have my SIM card, which I was. I was frustrated. Um, because I didn't know like when we were going to go back or what was happening. Um, she was like, we can go back tomorrow. And, but I was just like, I don't know what we're doing. Like I kind of just felt like out of control. Like we, I don't know what's going on. And something I realized, I realized I come to this a lot is I actually love control. This could be a Scorpio thing. Um, it definitely is. <laughs> um, but this is also why this trip is really humbling for me because really it's a testament to just completely the unknown because like Raquel's leading a lot of this and usually like like I had a travel company like I'm used to being the leader of what's happening when we're traveling and Miss Control Freak over here really loves that uh, even though sometimes I don't want to have to take charge of everything and that's what I said to myself when I was on this trip I was like I want to be in my receptive receiving mode and of course I'm down to support and help out and you know take charge of whatever needs to happen but I'm allowing the universe to lead I'm allowing Raquel to lead and I trust her like she's boss woman you know she knows her stuff <sighs> and she's also super nice but anyway so she was like blasting <laughs> salsa music and they were her and Luna were like singing to this like super loud salsa music and I have like my headphones on and I'm just like I can barely breathe right now and then <laughs> Raquel's uh, Google Maps yesterday when we were at the airport, we're at the San Francisco airport, and she's like, it says it's going to take eight hours to get to Reno. And I was like, it doesn't take eight hours to get to Reno from here. I know this because I'm from here. So I mapped it on my phone, and my phone said four hours. So we realized last night that there's something wrong with her Google Maps, but today I didn't have my SIM card working, and we I think we just forgot, and she just mapped it. And it took us... it. <laughs> It gave us a route that was an extra hour and a half longer than we needed it to be. So basically, she was like rushing us to get here because we needed to get everything going with the RV. And it should have taken an hour. And it took us like two and a half hours to get here. And we were going down this like back windy road behind cars at like 35 miles an hour, which is like, I don't know, 20 kilometers an hour. So like it was just like ridiculously slow. And they're blasting salsa music and singing along. And I'm about to have a panic attack. So that was me for like an hour. <laughs> and then finally, I like came out of it. I think I just like, I ate some chocolate. I, I, you know, my blood sugar went back up. I did some breathing. I put on meditation music. And I also spoke up and I said, hey, I'm actually really not feeling good. So they put on like calm music. We even had it quiet for a while. And they were just like really feeling me and understanding and being supportive, which was really helpful. And to me, this is like what real friendship is like. Yeah, you can have people you party with, but are they going to be there for you when you're about to have a panic attack and actually be cool and want to want to support you and not have it make it about them? So I lots of kudos and um, just really honoring that for me, these are the kind of moments that make me really trust someone and make me realize like, yeah, you have my back for real and I can yeah, I can trust you and we can we can build things together and co-create. So definitely had some trust earned and, and um, cel just celebrating that 
that I'm with amazing women on this trip because this is how I show up, you know, and that's something I was calling in uh, manifesting was having people in my life that are supportive and nourishing for me in a way that actually is supportive and nourishing, like, and are just there to show up. They're not asking for anything. Like they're doing it unconditionally because this is who they are because this is a reflection of who I am. Like this is how I show up. So that's what I was asking for from the universe and the universe provided. So super grateful. Anyway, so this is when we get to a crazy part of the story. So we get here to where the camper van is parked and uh, Raquel has been messaging. She parked this here last year and it's just like this house that has kind of like this RV park. It's just basically a bunch of it's like a house with like a mechanic shop ne next to it and probably 50 RVs parked here. And apparently everyone pays to have their RVs here and they have all the things that you need to service it, you know, like water and mechanics. And so, and they know how to like get it going and fix it basically. So it's like a maintenance place, a storage place. And Raquel has been calling this guy for like weeks to let him know that we're coming. And he said to her last year when she left the camper van here, leave the keys with me so that I can uh, get it going before you come so I can have it ready for you. Right. And so she's been calling him and saying, Hey, we're coming on this day. Can you, you know, start it, make sure it's going. Can you get it going for us? Like this is part of what she's paying him for. <laughs> and he kept saying, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, I'll do it. And then she called him last week and then she called him two days ago and he's like, yeah, yeah, like it's all ready for you. Everything's great. And like just come so we get here today this guy's not here he's not answering the phone no one has started the camper van and we can't find the keys <laughs> so there's like other people here so i'm going to talk about uh this woman named diane and joe so diane is super sweet she lives here i don't actually know her connection to anyone but she was there helping us and like gave me s so she gave me wi-fi so i could call the phone company and they ended up connecting my SIM card remotely, which made me super happy. And um, and then she found like all the keys that she could find. And literally, I'm not joking, it's like a hundred keys uh, in this bucket. It's just like, and we're just like, okay. And so we just like take this hundred keys and we go to the camper van where like all of us are just trying every single key. So this takes about an hour and none of them work. And Raquel was getting you know, justifiably super frustrated and Luna doesn't know what to do. And I'm like still feeling panicky. So I go off and I just like meditate and do some raw pay and come back to my center. And then I'm like, okay, everything happens for us. We're going to figure this out. Like just follow the synchronicity. What is my intuitive hit of what to do next? So I become really good friends with Joe. So Joe is like our main man today. Like this other guy who rented her, or is, is the owner of the space his name's pat like i literally have never seen this guy i don't know if he even exists because he's been mia all day like missing an action and not answering his phone so this other guy joe he's just i think he works for pat or something and he is just the nicest guy he's like getting us drinks getting us popsicles trying driving back and forth trying all the keys with us like staying super positive just like all around super helpful so after about an hour and a half, like after I'd meditated, like Raquel was just like, I'm, I need a break. Like, I'm just super angry. And I did everything I could to make this work. She's a Virgo. So she's like, I planned and organized all of this. So we have perfect timing for everything we need to do. And I don't know what to do now because none of this is working. So I was like, okay, you go do you. Uh, uh, and Joe was like, maybe we can try uh, this Pat guy's truck. He has another truck and maybe he left the keys in there. So I was like, okay, me and Joe are going to go look. <laughs> this is, I just kept feeling like we need to go look for these, this keys in this other truck. So we went and looked, wasn't there. And then he was like, okay, there's the mechanic shop. We can look in there. And I was like, yeah, let's look. And then he's like, okay, there's this one. <laughs> it's like a scavenger hunt. <sighs> I'm serious. Like life is like a movie. It's a real, it's all one big game. So him and I are just like having so much fun and being super positive. And I'm like, come on, Joe, wh what do you think? What's, what's the next thing we need to do? Like, I feel like we're going to find, figure this out. And so he's like, okay, there's a styrofoam like bucket. And I think there's more keys in there. So let's try and find that in the mechanic shop. So we found that we found a bunch more keys. We brought them back and we were trying them on like the main side door. This is where we've been trying all the keys all morning. And then he was like, you know, there's the driver's side door. And I was like, why didn't we try that door? <laughs> like, 
I was like, why didn't we try that one for all the keys? And he's like, well, they should work in all of them. But anyway, so we went over the driver's side door. We tried a couple of keys. It didn't work. And then suddenly he pushes on the window and the window opens. And I was like, what? And so he like unlocks the door. And so we get into the camper van. This is super important to the story because once we get inside, there's a set of keys inside the camper van, which... And then Raquel and Luna drive up in the car and, and I open the door and they're like, what? You got inside the camper? Like, we've been trying for like three hours at this point to get inside this camper van. And so they were like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, okay. We found one set of keys, but I don't know if they work for the car, like to actually turn it on. So we found out that the keys work to open all the doors and the compartments, but the key to start the engine, we have not found the key. To this point, it is now like 11 p.m. at night. We still have not found the key. But uh, opening up the camper van was super important because then we were able to start organizing everything. Like she has bicycles in here and tons more outfits. And we were able to just and like clean everything out. And like because we had the other set of keys, we could turn on the generator, turn on the battery. So Joe helped us like set everything up. We got the air conditioner turned on. We vacuumed like this place is like an actual it's like 50 meters long or i think that's accurate but it's basically it's like an apartment this is how big this is i think it is 50 meters it's a huge camper van like i'm sitting on a queen bed right now and it has like a full shower and a full fridge a stove um and so yeah we got the air conditioning going and it has like two fold-out couches um and then we brought in all of our, we basically brought in all of our suitcases and like unpacked and got everything organized. So we just, I was, I just said to the girls, let's act like we have, we've already started the car. We have the keys. We're good. And let's just like get everything going. Because this Pat guy, the one who owns this whole place, he kept saying, I'm going to come back in half an hour. Like apparently he was on the playa, like at Burning Man today to like bring some supplies to someone else. And then he said he hurt his face and then this thing. And he kept saying, I'll be back in a half an hour. And if we finally got a hold of him, like he answered someone's phone call and said he was coming back. And then like hours later, he still wasn't here. But I was like, let's just manifest that he comes back. We find the keys because he said to Raquel, like, I know the keys are there. Like I saw them or something. And I was like in their hundred pile of keys, like, dude, you need a better system. <laughs> like what the fuck? <laughs> like, how do they get anything done? And also Raquel was like, you know, she's a Virgo. She's super organized. So she's like, I would have just kept my keys, but he told me to leave them with him because he was going to take care of the thing and then he didn't do anything. So I should have just kept the keys. Anyways, so we unpacked everything, got everything organized. And then at this point, my jet lag like super hit ho like hardcore. So I was just like, I'm going to lay down for an hour. And then I opened, like, I, I think I slept for like an hour or an hour and a half. And when I woke up, it was dark. Again, I don't know what day or time it is or anything. Um, and then in this moment, I was just like, it's time to reach out to my family. I need to, like, I, everyone keeps asking me, have you reached out to your family yet? And I was like, no, no, I'm going to do it when I get there. Like, I'll figure this out. And when I woke up from my nap, I was like, it's time. It's time to talk to my family. So I... Ooh, I'm feeling super emotional. <coughs> I called my mom and she didn't answer, so I left a voice message. I called my sister, my little sister, Christine, and she answered. And I haven't spoken to her in like eight years. Uh, I call, okay, so just so you know, I call all of my family at least once a year and leave them a voice message and let them know how I'm doing. And I let them know how to contact me and they don't ever contact me. My mom recently contacted me again, but that was like the first time in years. And she emailed me scriptures <laughs> and told me to come back into the religion. So, uh, I mean, I was going to say it wasn't very fruitful, but, you know, that's subjective to everyone's reality. But anyways, so my little sister answered and she had just woken up from a nap also. We love naps in my family. And she was kind of like in shock because my little sister and I have never had like a super great relationship, even when we were kids. Um, love each other very much, but it's been complicated. Let's just put it that way. And I just said to her, I was like, look, I love you. And I, um, I don't know when the next time I'm going to be in the States and I'm here and I'm open for connection for whatever 
everyone it's available for. So, um, you know, I just called mom and I, um, going to call dad soon. I'm going to call, reach out to everyone and I'm available to talk or hang out with everyone. And she was like, okay, um, let me think about it. I'll let you know. And I was like, okay, well, this is my U S number. You can call me back on this. And if nothing else, I'm going to a festival for a week and I will like check in with you afterwards. And, um, she was like, okay, sounds good. And the, like, you know, even though she wasn't like super like, yay, I like, I know my little sister and I know that she would meet up with me. Like, yeah, I just know her and I know, and I know that she'll love it. You know, like it's one of those things where like, I'm always going to be her big sister. So, um, yeah, that feels really nice. And then I called my old, so I have an older sister and a younger sister on the middle and they're two years apart on both sides. So my older sister is two years older. She's also a Scorpio. Uh, and she has two little girls and a husband. And um, I've always been really, really close with my older sister growing up. Like people would always think that we were like best friends, even though she's two years older. Uh, and when I left the religion, she like really hardcore disconnected from me, um, which was super painful at the time because she was like my best friend. Um, and, you know, now, like, I've done so much healing over the last couple of years and lots of family constellations and just coming into my center. And I, I'm coming at all of this with such a different energy. Like, for me, in the past, when I reach out to my family, it would be like, it would be the energy of, like, I need to connect with you. Like, love me. I love you. Like, this is what we need to do is be a family. And now I'm like, I have my chosen family, you know? Like, I have my soul family that we're on the same spiritual path. We all support each other. You know, I've connected a lot of my soul family around the world and they're all connected to each other. So it's like, it actually feels like a family. Like we all check up on each other. So for me, I feel like I already have an abundance of this. And of course my soul chose to be born into my birth family. So I'm here for whatever connection, um, they're up for. And I also don't need it. So it's such a beautiful thing to come with like unconditional love. And this is what I just kept saying to everyone. It's like, I love you and I'm here for whatever connection you're excited for. Um, and I think that like, if we all looked at this, like, you know, less about what can we get out of the situation or this person and more about just like, I love you unconditionally. And I just want to share this unconditional love with you. I think our lives would be a lot happier <laughs> and uh, the world would be a lot better of a place. Um, just put, putting that little plug in there. Uh, but anyway, so then I called my cousin Bowen um, on my dad's side of the family and we've always been super close. He's like a year older than me uh, and he was super supportive. We talked for like 15 minutes and <coughs> he was like, yeah, I'd love for you to come stay with me and my wife. They live in Portland and um, his sister, my other cousin, Acacia, she's like, I know Acacia would love to see you. And she has a son that I want you to meet. And, and then like all, all of my grandparents are still alive, um, on both sides of my family. So he was like, uh, I think it's really great if you go see like our grandparents. And I said, would you come with me? Like, would you and your wife come with me and maybe Acacia? And he was like, yeah, I would be super down for that. And I find it super interesting. Cause like I talked to both sides of my cousins and they, live like super close to my grandparents and they see them like once a year on both sides and I'm like basically I asked both sides so I talked to my cousins on my mom's side as well and I was like would you come see grandparents with me and um like everyone's down to support basically and that made me feel really good because I was like what if I come through and just create these like mini family reunions like let's all come together because this is wh wh what I do around the world and so it would be really beautiful for me to be able to use that skill set I of that I have to bring everyone together with my own family like for me that's like coming full circle <coughs> it's super interesting I, I talked to my cousin Ethan on my mom's side and he's he's one year younger than me like my cousins and I are all like very similar age so growing up we were all super close um, and I said to him, I asked him too, like, would you want to come see grandparents with me? And, uh, his sister, Carmen, who's I'm really close with, like we could all come together and like his mom and my mom are sisters and we can all like, uh, they all live near each other in Portland, near Portland. And he was like, I would love to come, but I don't want to make them feel guilty. And I was like, what are you talking about? Why would they feel guilty? 
And my cousin Ethan told me like that he's actually disfellowshipped. I didn't realize this. I didn't even know he gotten baptized. But basically, if you get baptized in the religion of Jehovah's Witness and you like have sex outside of marriage, uh, then they can like disfellowship you, which is like kicking you out of the religion. And if they do that, then they make the rest of your family feel really guilty if they want to hang out with you. Because the whole point is that your family is supposed to disconnect from you in order to encourage you. I'm putting this in quotations if you are... <laughs> listening to this uh and not watching uh because i think it's bullshit uh but basically it's the manipulation and the 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 controlling part of the cult is basically like brainwashing your family to believe that your eternal soul is at stake and so the best way to save you quote unquote is to cut you out of their lives um uh, because you're now technically bad association and this is supposed to motivate you to clean up your life and come back into the religion, which it doesn't. It just ends up disconnecting a lot of families. I think some people it does motivate them to come back just because they want their family. But then that's not a reason to, that's not a, that's not a pure energy reason. Like there's not clean energy happening anywhere in this situation. This is all like ah, guilt, shame, manipulation, none of this. This is what I consider a cult, you know? For me, I consider it a cult where if you are trying to leave, they don't let you leave without punishing you. You know, like within the religion, I got baptized when I was 12. Like I had no clue what I was doing or what it meant, like from a responsibility or like the consequences. And I was disfellowship from the religion for two years. And I, I ended up getting reinstated because I, like, I did the work to come back, which is also, oh my God, so much bullshit don't want to talk about that right now but um because i wanted to be able to have contact with my family like i really was like i i did the thing that i need to do and even now and then it's so ironic because after i got reinstated it took me two years usually it takes six months uh it took me two years to get reinstated when that happened my whole body was like i don't so it like it took me getting reinstated for me to realize somatically like within my body how unsafe it felt emotionally to be in that religion because once I got back in my whole body was like I can't do this like I I literally still have nightmares to this day about like they call it going in service where you go door to door and like preach I still have nightmares to this day that I am like going out door to door and like preaching about the religion because in the dream, I don't believe in it and I don't support it. And like somehow I'm like going and speaking about something that's not authentic to me. And it's just like, yeah, it's like a nightmare. That's how I felt when I got reinstated because I really got reinstated to see my family and I didn't believe in the religion anymore and I stopped going, you know? And so it's interesting because I'm not disfellowshipped. My family a lot of my, like my mom at least treats me as if I am because she knows that I've had sex outside of marriage, like since I've gotten reinstated. So technically I'm a bad girl. Anyways, um, long story short, I don't know what's going to happen with Ethan and my mom's side, my grandparents, but I'm open. I'm going to invite all of them to get together. And if they want to feel guilty, like Ethan was like, I know it's good for all of us to get together, but also I don't want to live with them. Like apparently they would, s they would, hang out with him like my grandparents would hang out with him and then they would call him later a couple days later and say that they don't want to hang out with him anymore because they feel guilty so like they would say yes and then they would like guilt him later because they felt guilty and he was like i'm not into any of this like if they want to see me that's great but i don't want them like calling me later and telling me like it was a bad idea and that they feel bad I think that's valid. <laughs> it's just so fun. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? But anyways, and then what else? I talked to my best friend, Christina, and so great to talk to her and catch up. And um, she's still in the religion, but mostly just for her family. Um, and she was telling me like, yeah, of course I would love to see you. Um, and she was like, I just want you to know that I'm like really proud of you. Like, because I can tell that you're really happy. She's like seeing you shining and like doing well in your life and just enjoying your life and shining bright makes me so happy. And I just want you to know I'm really proud of you. And I was like, wow, that means so much to me. Thank you. Like it really, it really made me feel good because, you know, like she was my best friend growing up. Like literally, if you imagine like <coughs> best friends in the whole world, like this is my homegirl, Christina. And, um, <clears throat> since I left the religion I've always been like 
you know, it would make me sad if she disconnected from me. And she never has. So no matter what has been going on with me, she's always been there. <sighs> and that's what real friends are, you know? So then I called my dad. So this is like, this is like the juicy part of the story, right? So um, I called my dad and he answers. And I was like, hi, it's Brittany. And he's like, oh, hi. And I was just like, you know, I said the whole thing about, like, I'm here in the States for a festival, but I'm actually here to, like, see a bunch of family. I'm going to do a road trip down the West Coast. And I would love to see you, you know. And he was like, this is the part where I got really shocked myself because he was like, yeah, okay, I would love to see you too. And I was like, okay. Like the last time I talked to my dad was 10 and a half, or saw my dad and talk to him live like I call him leave messages but he doesn't ever answer or respond was at his wedding he got remarried after my parents got divorced and I asked him on the phone I said how long have you guys been like are you and your wife doing well and he's like yeah yeah we're doing great and I was like how long ago did you guys get married and he was like 10 and a half years ago <laughs> and I was like wow that's the last time we've seen each other it was 10 and a half years ago and he's like yeah it's been a really long time and I you know, and it was interesting because he didn't ask me like how I was doing, but then I just started sharing. Like I was like, you know, I live in Thailand, right? And he's like, yeah, I've actually heard like through the grapevine that you live there. How are you doing? And I was like, yeah, I'm doing really well. I love my life. I have a beautiful home and a beautiful dog and friends and I love what I do. And he's like, I'm really happy for you. And I was like, thank you. And then I asked him, I was like, do you know what Burning Man is? And he's like, yeah, I know what Burning Man is. I'm like, I'm going to Burning Man with my girlfriends. And and I was like, don't worry, I'm going to do the whole thing sober. And he's like, okay, have fun and be safe. And like, you have to understand that like most of my life growing up with my dad, I felt like I was the adult. Like he would be like really um, kind of like rage. Like, like he would get really angry and yell and scream and he would just, and then at the end of it, he'd be like, this is your fault because you did this. Like, almost like he was the child reacting to the parent or something. Like, he was throwing a tantrum. So, I spent a lot of my life, like, yeah, with an emotionally volatile parent that I didn't understand. And uh, who's really aggressive and abusive and stuff. And so, and I never really felt like he was a parent. Like, my dad was always really physically protective, but, like, emotionally no, we were never on the same page and I never felt like he understood me. So for us to have this phone call where he's just like, yeah, I would love to see you. I love you. And, uh, you know, have fun and be safe. I was like, <laughs> wow, this is like really easy. <laughs> like I thought I was going to come here into the States and like, you know, the whole point I was telling myself, like, just stay in your center no matter what happens with your family, you know, and I just knew like, and then people kept asking like, do you think they're going to want to see you? Like, have you reached out? What's happening? And I was like, I don't know. And I was kind of putting it off because I thought it was going to be like this really intense and it probably is still going to be super intense, but like emotionally intense thing and, you know, have to stay in my center. I thought, you know, if I get rejections from my family and my dad was like, my mom and my dad and my older sister are the ones that I was really unsure about. Um, my dad, because we have never had a very close relationship, and my mom and my older sister, because they're very religious. And my mom and my older sister are the people I'm closest to growing up, but since I left the religion, they have been the ones who have been, like, the most vocally, like, disconnecting from me. But, yeah, to talk to my dad um, and say, I told him, like, yeah, I'm going to do a road trip, and I'd love to see you. And he was like, sounds great. Like, I'm here. Let me know when you come through. And, you know... I messaged I was like you have whatsapp and it's just like I messaged him whatsapp afterwards and I think I'm still in shock uh I messaged a girlfriend I messaged my friend Daria uh afterwards and I when I was sending her the voice message I started crying because I was like wow it felt like I actually was like I had a dad for the first time <laughs> in a while <laughs> like I have my spiritual dad Richard which I'm really grateful for but like you know like healing your birth family stuff is a huge deal uh and to have it be so easy uh at least my initial first step in all of this it's very refreshing i'm like celebrating myself and it's so nice because the girls uh went grocery shopping when i was 
doing all of this. So they came home like five minutes after I finished all my phone calls and they were like celebrating me and jumping up and down and so happy for me and like proud of me for reaching out. And I just feel so grateful for their support and for all of your support because so many of you have reached out and just really sent like positive energy and words of affirmations and um, good energy. Yeah. Just like we're here for you. We're excited for your journey. Proud of you. And this really does mean a lot for me because I'm a very strong person. I'm also like <laughs> one of the most sensitive people that I know. <laughs> so like this juxtaposition of energy is super, a super roller coaster <laughs> in my life. Um, like I can handle a lot, but it's also like, I also cry a lot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I just want to say I'm really grateful to heal this. Um, it's interesting. Luna looked up my, have you heard of something called astro mapping? It's like astrology, but you can look it up on, I think it's Astro Cafe. You can Google like astro mapping. It's a free thing that you can put in your, your birth information and it shows you a world map and then it has like lines through where uh, you have like energy points. And so you can like click on them of like where you are in the world and it tells you like what you're going to learn in this physical location. And so Luna was looking at mine today and I have like Saturn and Chiron and da da da. And it's like going through like Reno and where Burning Man is. And she was saying that it's like, I'm going to completely change my career. It says that I have the opportunity to completely change my career, change my whole worldview. Like basically like my whole life can change here in this energy and heal my relationship with my father. So I was like, oh, that's interesting this morning. Because, you know, at that point, I hadn't, hadn't spoken to my dad in like 10 years. Uh, and then to have this phone call, I was just like, well, that was easy. <laughs> and like for me, I think it's also this energy of like, I don't need anything from my dad. You know, like I have already spoken to him when I was 18 and left my house. I, left, I moved out when I was 17. And when I was 18, I called him and I told him like, yeah. I don't think you were a good dad. I feel like you were super abusive and, you know, da, da, da. And he told me, at the, he like actually kind of owned it at the time and was just like, I did the best I could. I'm sorry. Uh, so I've spoken all of this in the past and I've actually been very vocal with my father. This is why we've never had a super close relationship because he, um, <laughs> you know, me being me. And if I don't like something, I'm very speaking up about it. And back in that time period, I was a lot more harsh with my words. So I've gotten a lot softer. But anyways, nowadays, I don't need anything. Like, again, this is the unconditional love coming through. And when you don't need anything, you can just be in the love together. I, my, my girlfriend, Rosanna, told me about this because she also has similar family dynamics. Her dad was really abusive growing up and, like, she openly shares about this on her Instagram that she went and visited her dad and she's just like, you know, her, she's my best friend in the whole world. And so her and I talk about this a lot and she's like, you know, we heal our family lineage when we show up unconditionally for, for our family. And of course we need to be in our center and we need to have our boundaries. Um, but when we can really just be there and be these like, like be the change you want to see in the world kind of thing, like vibrationally be this change of of like a new generation who is healed or healing and consciously looking at all of our stuff and doing our best to heal our family line. We're doing so much work that is positive and it's all energy. So it doesn't really matter how our family responds. It's just the fact that we're open and willing to be that positive energy in the world. Um, so, and also it's nice when your family responds positively. <laughs> So yeah, I'm really celebrating that. And then this is the funny part of the story today. So uh, Joe has been really helping us. This pack guy who owns the place came back and then has been avoiding us. Like it's a pretty big property. And like, so Raquel just went and tried to look for him and he literally like, I think he's hiding from us. And uh, she had like the title to the RV uh, mailed here in the last year and he like had the title and he wasn't giving it to us. It was all super shady, dude. Like I was like, what is going on? But we were all trying to stay positive. And I was like, we're going to figure this out. And then she, fi he finally answered the phone. It was the first time he got Raquel got a hold of him all day. Like he was answering other people's calls, but not hers. And then he yelled at her on the phone was like, how do you expect me to find your keys and your title? If I, um, 
the title is like the registration that you own the thing, you know? How do you expect me to find this if you keep calling me? And she's like, you do not get to be upset at me. Like, we have been here since 12 noon and it's now 10. We've been trying to figure this out for 10 hours and you have not been answering the phone or helpful. And you were supposed to, like, part of the reason why I'm paying you is you're supposed to have this all handled before I even get here. And then he just, like, hung up the phone on her. <laughs> I was just like, oh my God. So she came back like right when, right before I started this podcast, she was telling me all about this. And then she tells me that Joe told her that he figured out a way that we can, um, in English we say jerry rig, but basically like wire, you know, like when, <laughs> what are those Fast and the Furious, you know, those movies where they're like stealing cars, like he figured out a way where we can like wire, uh, jumpstart the, the car, the RV and then use a screwdriver <laughs> to turn it on and off from then on. And I I was like, oh my God, we have become like ghetto gangsters. <laughs> like this would be the funniest story if we drive to Burning Man with a screwdriver <laughs> in our in our um our engine to start the engine. And I was like, I'm super down for this option. The only thing is I want to make sure that it starts when we need to leave Burning Man, you know, because I don't want to be like stuck out there and we're like, okay, fuck, we can't start the car. But I think there's enough people out there that are mechanics like that actually are helpful at the Burning Man, um, at the Burning Man, at Burning Man that I know, like trust in the universe, synchronicity, magical things. But and then as I was making this podcast just now in the beginning, I could hear them all talking and Joe brought the title to the RV. So we have the the paperwork everything's okay and he said that we basically our goal is to leave here by 10 a.m tomorrow morning because we need to go back into the main city of reno and um you know do laundry do the rest of the grocery shopping get our hair done we're all getting our like braids in our hair because when you go out to burning man like the dust is just super intense and it's like really bad for your hair so we're gonna get our hair and also for fashion okay let's be real where fashionistas and this is the point of life is to enjoy this stuff okay i'm a girl i love fashion also you can be a guy and love fashion it's totally cool too but i love fashion so we're gonna get our hair braided because uh, it helps like keep in the i don't know it's just good for your hair and it looks cool so we're gonna do that uh and then we're going to go to burning man the next day so send us positive energy that we get um everything done that we need to get done um which i know we will it's all working out perfectly and it, the thing is is like it always works out if you stay positive and stay in your center and it usually is going to happen in like a way different way than what you expected and 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 usually really funny like if you're in on the fact that this is all one big cosmic joke like you know we got here uh, I got my SIM card activated in a way I didn't expect, you know, got connected to the girls because I was about to have a panic attack and we work through it together. So they understand me more. I feel like I can trust them more. Joe was super helpful. He didn't need to help us at all, but he just like fell in love with us and helped us all day long. And <laughs> we're probably going to go to Burning Man with a screwdriver in our ignition, which I just found hilarious. And I reconnected to my family. Uh, and talk to my dad for the first time in 10 and a half years. So this is all in one day. Of, this is my first full day of being back in America. So lots of juicy things happening. And yeah, I'm just super grateful for everything. And I'm grateful for all of you for being here on the journey with me. And we're all growing on this together because literally I have no clue what's going to happen tomorrow. And this is why I love making these podcasts as, they go, as I go because one, I will be able to remember this forever, you know, for posterity's sake, my kids can watch this. And two, like I get to share this with all of you, you know, like we're in on this together. And I just think it's really beautiful. Like if I made this podcast about this story, you know, tomorrow, the next day, there'd be like 500 more stories I want to share. So I'm going to try and make as many as I can, um, as I go along. And I don't know about the Wi-Fi situation to upload these, but we're going to do it the best we can. <laughs> um, Oh, and I want to say one more thing is that we have my course that uh, the 21 day transformation experience is ha starting September 1st. So it's actually starting when I'm in Burning Man, which is also why it was very important for me to get a SIM card because apparently the AT&T, the cell phone company that we got it from is the only one that gets reception uh, in Burning Man. I think there's like Wi-Fi tents and stuff. I don't intend to be online that much, but I will for 
for all of you. We have so many of you that are signed up <coughs> and I'm like really excited about it. And we have a couple spots left. So if you're, s if you're excited to join us, it's going to be about <coughs> how to create your dream life and we're doing it together. So everyone's going to be in one big group together, supporting each other. I will put the lessons in the homework. Everyone gets to share about what they're, what, they're, what you know, how, it, how's it going to do all the things, get support, celebrate each other. It's so much fun. Like I am all about community. I'm all about the, you know, we do it together vibration. And to me, that's just like how I do everything. So I'm excited for you to come in on this with me. And I know that it will be life changing for everyone who joins. So I'm really excited for all of you who are joining. And if you're thinking about joining, definitely, I think that you should do it because this is the cheapest it's ever going to be. <laughs> uh, because, um, one, I, I want to make it affordable for everyone, but also right now we're just testing a lot of things out about how we're going to organize the courses because I'm going to, this is like, I'm going to be sharing a lot more in this way and I'm really excited for it. Um, but if you want to get in on early and say you were part of the first one and get access to a lot of things that are on the ground level and at the best prices, highly recommend joining now. Um, and if it's not your excitement, also okay. But I, for me, this is like, literally what I'm here for is to like change your life for the better. And, um, so many of you message me and say that listening to this podcast are that for you. And, and I'm like, let's keep activating each other. Like you listen to this podcast. I hope you go out and smile at someone and, you know, say something nice to someone, give someone a compliment, share some good energy, like just keep exponentially passing along this positive energy. Like let's, let's uplift each other. Let's like, when you think of the grid, like if you think of the world as like this energy grid and we're all lighting each other up and we're like lighting the grid up vibrationally around us. So just by you being in a positive energy and smiling at people, you're already changing the vibration of everyone around you. So like you totally matter. You totally make a difference just by being you. You don't need to do anything extra. Just be you and shine bright and be your happy self. And it's all beautiful. Okay. That's it. I'm going to go eat some food. It's actually midnight here now. Um, and my body thinks that it is 10 a.m. in the morning. So I'm going to go eat some food and then do my best to get a good night's sleep. And I'm sending you all lots of love and I'll see you in the next episode. Let's see what happens next. <laughs> okay, bye.